But the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. We need to come together in the name of Christ to offer praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. And we're going to listen to our first hymn, which is At the Name of Jesus. jazzy version. Excellent. So let's gather to worship God and affirm our faith. At the name of Jesus, if you have found any encouragement from being united in Christ, if his love has brought you any strength or consolation, if you have any sense of fellowship in the spirit, if you have any tenderness or compassion within you, then live that out by being like-minded, having the same love being one in spirit and purpose. Mm -hmm. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or personal pride, but in true humility, help others before helping yourselves. Seek not your own advantage, but also the interests of others. Your mindset should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. He was in ve his very nature God, yet did not cling on to his equality with God. Instead, he emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, becoming human. And having become human, he humbled himself still further. He obediently subjected himself to death, to a shameful death on a cross. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. In the light of this, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is exalted above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Everyone and everything in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bow before him, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And now we listen to our next hymn or carol, as with gladness, men of old. Gracious. 
Let us come before God together. Faithful one, whose word is life, come, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we kneel with the kings before the newborn Christ child, we open our hearts in penitence and faith. Let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for today. God our Father, in love you sent your Son, that the world may have life. Lead us to seek him among the outcast and to find him in those in need. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And Rose is going to bring us our Gospel reading. Thank you. The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who was born the King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search of the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way with the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, and coming to the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rose. Let's just commit to God this time together. Lord, I pray that through my words we may hear something of your voice, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So what do you buy for the person who has everything? A quick browse on Google suggests a personalised travel map, a copy of the complete manual of things that might kill you, <laughs> a virtual cooking class with Gordon Ramsay, or my personal favourite, membership of the Bacon of the Month Club. <laughs> Apparently, gifts given to the Queen during her reign in past years include a chocolate Windsor Castle, a pair of cowboy boots, several Burmese horses, a pair of sloths from Brazil, two black beavers, two young giant turtles, 
an elephant called Jumbo from the Cameroon, and no doubt a partridge in a pear tree somewhere along the line. But this morning in church, we're again back with those wise men in the nativity story, those men who brought human gifts to the great divine Jesus. <clears throat> yes, the year 2020 has finally rolled over into 2021, and the church lectionary has rolled around to Matthew's account of Christ's birth. There are no shepherds, no choirs of angels for Matthew, but rather he gives us an insight into the man Joseph, his dreams, his inner thoughts, and his role in fulfilling the prophecies of old. And of course, it's Matthew who tells us of the Magi or the wise men. I'm sure here in Axmouth, you're very wise and you already know all the things that the Magi were not. They were not kings, they were not necessarily three of them, and they're not named in our Bibles. But between them, of course, they did give three gifts, gifts for this small child whom they referred to as the King of the Jews. I always find that title, the King of the Jews, slightly chilling because we know with the benefit of hindsight that this was the term, the title used as a mocking accusation during Jesus' trial for his life. It's the title which will be nailed above his body as he hangs on the cross. Matthew doesn't let us get carried away in the romantic view of this gift giving for a child. But here are the Magi, a group of the wisest of men, educated stargazers, knowledge seekers, traveling strangers, bringing gifts and bowing their knees in front of a baby or possibly a toddler. What a very bizarre scene that must have been. It's not very dignified, is it, to bend the knee in front of a small, no doubt, completely bemused child. It's not very sensible, humanly speaking. The conviction of those men must have been so great that they really were in the presence of God. It must have been all-consuming, strong enough to cut through the social and cultural expectations and etiquette, and as well as their own human pride and hesitation. To the uninformed onlooker, the scene must have appeared, frankly, a bit ridiculous. But the men were living by faith. They're taking it on trust that God has brought them to this point and is continuing to draw them closer to him in worship. When we picture the Magi on their knees before the child Jesus, we're in some ways watching the final episode of a faith story which must have started many months or years before. In a way, I think the story of the wise men is a bit like a parable of faith stories today or at any time. Firstly, with that first step out, the wise men start with asking questions, don't they? They ask questions not only about what they saw and what they were studying, but also about the meanings of these things. When I was a child, I was constantly, constantly asking questions. I don't know how my mother coped, really. Um, but it didn't stop, even as a teenager and even today. I remember a friend of mine, when I was a teenager, had this poster on her wall. It was a really cheesy poster. And it said, the larger the island of knowledge, the longer the coastline of wonder. It was very cheesy, but actually I've never forgotten it. And I, I kind of agree with it. I think the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And that's why it's always quite exciting and, and fun, I find, being a follower of Christ. Because there's just so much you don't know and always more questions to ask and more to find out about. So that's perhaps a, a good resolution for me and for some of us here to keep on committing to finding out more about Jesus in 2021. I haven't got used to saying 2021 yet. So step one, the, the Magi stepped out, they asked questions and they sought answers. But then the second step is that they were prepared to move outside what was comfortable to them. So they would have had a prestigious role in court, advising, um, influencing the royal court and the household. And to leave that, that must have been a risky step. And yet they wanted to know, they, their desire for truth was so great that it pushed them out into the unknown. Again, maybe we're being 
gently nudged or pushed to do something different this year for God. And then their third step, they come into the presence of Jesus and they worshipped. Part of the worship was to give the best that they could. Undoubtedly, they received from God too, as we all do, gifts of blessing and peace, a sense of purpose, and of course, forgiveness. And yet their, their response to that receiving is to give. And they give honour, and they give worship, they give their time, they give their skills, and they give the gifts which they can. And then that fourth step on the journey, they leave Jesus at some point, and they carry on. After this amazing, must have been a spiritual high for them, they go back and they carry on with the rest of their lives. They go back to the reality of the everyday and they go back to where they came from, to where they belong. But they travel now as changed people. They are still seekers, but they're also bearers of the truth. They are men of faith journeying on with God. So they questioned, they took risks to step out, they worshipped, and then they just carried on, they kept on going. I don't know where we might see ourselves today in that, those parts of that journey, but I'm sure we can all identify somewhere where we might be, and God tells us today to just keep on keeping on. Now, it says to me in the lectionary today that we're either Christmas 2 or Epiphany, and I just had my own little epiphany when I was preparing for today. I thought I'd share with you. It's probably really obvious to everyone else. But it only just, I just had that aha moment about the nativity story. And it's this, it suddenly dawned on me that in this story, no one actually belongs. No one, if I might put it that way, is actually any sort of local community player. We're always talking, especially in rural church circles, I think, about the importance of community and place and belonging, and that's right. But in the nativity story, I suddenly realised nobody actually belongs. There's Mary and Joseph who are displaced, dispossessed, they're from a different community altogether. The shepherds are brought in from where they're used to being, out in the fields, to, some, to the habitat that's not normal for them. And then the wise men, obviously, they come from miles away, from a different land and culture. And the angels, well, they're from another realm altogether. And here is the God, the Son, King of Heaven, landed unceremoniously in a stable setting. So it seems like God brought together this temporary community under this mysterious star for this mysterious moment which could never last, it could never grow stale, and I suppose for us it could never lose its wonder for that. So as we hear of this nativity community, this strange mix of diverse individuals thrown together by God's planning, I think we're all invited to join in that story and make our own response. And just from that reading we had today, I think there are at least three responses. So in that reading, we've got King Herod. His response to the news of Jesus coming was one of fear and fury. And he just wanted to reject God, his kingdom, and everything about it. That's one way to respond to the nativity. And then there are the priests and the teachers of the law. They're mentioned, and they knew where the Messiah was to be born in answer to that question. And yet it seemed that their response appears that they closed their hearts. They didn't really react or move or go and find out. They just stayed where they were with their knowledge. And then there was the wise men. They seemed to respond wholeheartedly to the pull of God in that curious star. And they moved and they opened their hearts and they were changed from seekers to worshippers to witnesses as they went back. So as 2021 dawns, I think God is waiting to see how we will respond. I think of the words of that, one of those songs we just heard. Holy Jesus, every day, keep us in the narrow way. And when earthly things are past, bring our ransomed souls at last, where we need no star to guide, where no clouds thy glory hide. Amen. Amen.
going to call upon Rose again, who's going to lead us in our prayers. Thank you. How great are God's riches. How deep are his wisdom and knowledge. Who can explain his decisions? Who can understand his ways? For all things were created by him and all things exist through him and for him. To God be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for the new year. For all the possibilities ahead in this new year, make us thankful, O Lord. Give us wisdom and courage and discernment in the face of so much chaos, despair and fear. Help us to see how, in our circumstances, we can contribute towards peace, faith and love, and give us the will to translate our desires into actions. We pray for our world. O God, King of King and Lord of Lords, we pray for statesmen, leaders and rulers. May they be quiet in spirit, clear in judgment, able to understand the issues that face them. May they think often of the common people on whose behalf they must speak and act. May they remember that in keeping your laws, it means only good and happiness. Grant them patience, grant them courage, grant them foresight and great faith. In their anxieties, be their security. In their opportunities, be their inspiration. By their plans and their actions, may your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray for our Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, and all the royal family. Dear Lord, please keep them all safe and well. And we pray for those in need. Lord Jesus, we pray today for parents who have no food to cook for their children, for those who cannot earn enough money for their families, for children who are sick or frightened, and for all those that are alone and without people to love them. We pray for our church. We pray for the bishops of Exeter and Crediton and the Archdeacon. We pray for Kate, our Rural Dean, and Clive and Nikki, our Vickers, and Shuna, who is here with us this morning. This morning, too, we remember all those who in our, are in our mission community, to which we all belong, the lay readers, and the many people who work as a team under Clive and Nikki. We pray for our community. During the year, many of our fundraising events had to be cancelled due to the Kenora virus. But gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping our residents in our village safe and free from that virus. We pray, Lord, for those suffering with the COVID virus. We remember those in hospital and those at home and those who have lost their loved ones. Dear Lord, may they feel your love each time they pray to you. We pray too for the doctors, nurses and chaplains caring for all these people with dedication and love. We pray to and thank you for Anne and the friends of the church for the wonderful display of lights decorating the outside of the church, which have been seen by so many people. 
We thank you too, Lord, for the acts of kindness shown by so many neighbours caring for neighbours and many phone calls made just to check that those in the village who live alone are well. We pray for our friends and family. O oh God, make the door of our house wide enough to receive all those that need human love and fellowship and the Heavenly Father's care, and narrow enough to shut out all envy, pride and hate. Make its thresh threshold smooth enough to be no stumbling block to children or to be straight linked feet by rugged enough to turn back the tempest power. Make it a gateway to thine eternal kingdom. We remember those of our family, friends and our church family who are not well at this time. We pray for Jeannie, for Francis, for Leslie and William. And we also pray for the family and friends of Mr. Ray Board, who died last week. And in a moment of silence, please pray for the people you know and love who are unwell. And lastly, gracious Father, we pray for ourselves. We thank you for keeping us safe and well. And as we enter a new year, we do ask you, Father, to give us wisdom, guide us as we make decisions, and keep us with the peace that only you can give. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Holy God, make us transparent with your light and use our prayers to bring light to others. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
I like at the beginning of a new year to remind myself of this um, covenant prayer of the Methodist Church, which I think is ace. So um, it's very challenging, but I thought it might be nice to just have an opportunity before we leave to, um, to pray that prayer, if you'd like to, we'll pray it together um, and make that commitment really, committing our time this year to God. My, um, my inkling is to read it quite slowly together um, and also to stand if you'd like and maybe get the circulation back in your feet. So if you'd like to stand, you're welcome to. And let's say it slowly together. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. And shall we say together the blessing? Remember us, O God, from age to age be our comforter. You have given us the wonder of time, blessings in days and nights, seasons and years. Bless your children at the turning of the year and fill the months ahead with the bright hope that is ours in the coming of Christ. You are our God, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Please do sit down.
remains for me to say a big thank you to everybody who's helped uh, put the service together today and uh, hope you can go and get warm and uh, keep being the lovely community that you are. So now may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, those you love and pray for today and evermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.